Well, welcome back. We're going to go on to chapter two. We're in another place that I like to go to. In fact, my back is up against this um, jack pine or longleaf pine tree. And it's one of my favorite spots. Uh, this is one of the places I go deer hunting. I'll put a tree stand up in this spot. Uh, it'll be a, it's a platform that's about 18 feet up off the ground. And this isn't, there's a deer trail here. There's one over there. And there's a couple ancient stone walls. It's a place where deer tend to gather. And so I've taken deer out of here with the bow and arrow before, and I've shot coyote with the muzzleloader before. But never mind that. Let's get to the story here. Okay. Just wanted to change a little bit of the place here. Okay. Chapter six. That first night, Brian decided he was insane to have come back, insane to have agreed to do it. And insane for sending the plane away with all that wonderful equipment, especially the tent. Brian had allowed them to have almost no survival gear. He decided that not all people put in his position would have a hatchet, so even that old friend was left at home. He and Derek each had a knife, the kind that folds like a pocket knife but is bigger and is worn on the belt in a leather case. I have that in another video uh, on the YouTube thing where, um, you know, uh, what should I take? Other than that, they had, they had what was in their pockets. Some change, a few dollars in paper money. Derek had a large nail clipper and some credit cards. Brian had pictures of his mother and Deborah in his wallet. That's it, Derek had said early in the evening while, they, uh, while the sun was still on them but low in the west. Past the tops of the trees at the edge of the clearing, that's it. Brian had nodded. It's not much, is it? Brian had said nothing. The truth was, it wasn't much, especially for two people. They would need twice as much of everything, twice as much food, a large shelter. It changed things. All Brian had needed, all Brian had needed to worry about before, during the time, was himself. And that had been bad enough. Remember, he always called that period of, in his life the time. The thought of a second person, especially one as green as Derek, had not, had not somehow hit him until just then in late afternoon, and then it didn't matter. The plane was gone, things began to disintegrate fast after that. It was one thing Brian knew to have a plan, to want to do things. It was something else to actually get them done. Brian could not find a fire stone, so there was no fire. Without fire, there would be no, could be no smoke, and without smoke, he had no protection against the mosquitoes. Then came the first dark, and it was as bad as Brian had remembered, thick clouds of them whining, filling their ears and eyes and ears and nostrils. They had made a crude lean-to. Brian had missed the overhanging rock with his shelter back inside a great deal. Clearly, it would not stop the rain. Although they had tried to make rough shingles of old pieces of half-rotted bark, yet it was a start. But for some reason, some protective thought, they had crawled back into the lean-to when the mosquitoes first came, as if, Brian thought, they could hide from the little monsters. God, Derek said in a whisper, a tight sound in the darkness back in the lean-to. This is insane. They were sitting with their jackets pulled up over their heads, but due to Derek's size, when he pulled the jacket up, it pulled his shirt up from the waist and he exposed a bit of skin there. And, and where the mosquitoes found that, he pulled the shirt down and it exposed his neck. And when he hunched to cover that, they could get at his get his waist again, and in a small time, he was jerking up and down like a yo-yo. You must settle, Brian told him. In your mind, there are some fights you can't win. And I think this must be one of them. It will get worse and worse until after the middle of the night, when the coolness comes and mosquitoes will stop, or at least a lot of them will. And just the words that had helped had calmed Derek and himself as well dozing, listening to the whine of them all around his head in the dark as they tried to find a way through the jacket. He thought it was the way. It was the way of things here. The mosquitoes in the night and the coolness that he knew was coming was just part of the way of it, part of being here. And he thought he should tell Derek, but decided to keep his mouth shut. Like, as an example here, this is late May, almost early June. Uh, these little insects called black flies are coming out. They're all over the place. They're not bothering me too much right now in this bright sun, a little bit of a breeze. But, you know, if I'm near some running water, they tend to be, they congregate. And it's the way you just have to deal with it like they're dealing with the mosquitoes. Oh, 
Hey, big black ant. Get out of here. Derek would find it for himself. Well, wherever you have big pine trees, you're going to have black ants. That's just a rule of thumb. Derek would find it for himself, or he would not, just as Brian had found things out for himself. Brian left the lean-to and went back outside. There might be... Um, there might be part of a breeze later as the rain came and it would help. There was a sliver of a moon which made enough light to see the lake well. The flat water with the beam of moonlight coming across it and even with the mosquitoes still working at him, he was amazed at the beauty. There were night sounds, birds flittering things he knew were bats. He also knew they were eating mosquitoes. He'd set, he read about them in, a, in biology and he thought, get some, get some bats, get some, get all the mosquitoes there are. Something swam into the moonlight on the surface of the lake, either a muskrat or a beaver, and cut a V right up the uh, path of the moon. Seemed to be heading for the moon, into the moon itself. Water made the sound and he realized it was the river gurgling as it left to the lake to his right. Not fast and not wide, perhaps 40 or 50 feet across, the river still seemed to possess forest strength as it ran. Somehow the beauty overrode the mosquitoes. Brian was standing there looking through the gap in his jacket, which was still covered pulled up over his head when he heard Derek come up alongside him. It's incredible, isn't it? Derek said, saw it well. The beauty. And Brian was glad as he could see it. To see not just the bad parts, but the good uh, as well. I had forgotten, Brian said. I had dreams after I got out of time, out the last time. Not all nightmares, but dreams. I would dream of this, how pretty it was, how it could stop your breath with it, and then I would wake up in my room with the traffic sounds and the street lights outside, and I would feel bad, miss it. I would miss this, except for the mosquitoes. Brian smiled, well, yes, except for those. But even as they talked, the night temperature started to drop, and as if a switch went off, there were still some mosquitoes, but most of them left, and two of them were left standing in the moonlight. Incredible, Derek said, they're just gone. Haven't you run into them before, you know, when you were doing this course and all that for the government? Derek nodded, of course, sort of. I haven't run the courses that much, just wants to try to see what it was like, and I pretty much failed it. They always had tents and repellent and gear with them, you know, to take the edge off. He laughed softly. I'll change that the next time we have a meeting. It was wrong, psychologically wrong. You are right to leave all that in the plane, absolutely right. Later, when everything changed and he did not think there was hope, that statement was all that kept Brian going. Okay, now let's go to some of these questions real quick. Okay, now uh, question number six. You know, what did Brian and Derek have in their purse of uh, for survival gear? They had basically the clothes on their back, some paper, and the only real tools they had were the lockback knives that they had, the folding knife. Well, they both had one. Two things Brian wanted to do was make fire and make some type of shelter. What problems did they run into? Well, for one thing, the fire, he needed to find flint, a special hard glassy rock that will, when you scrape it against something like hardened steel, will create a spark. Well, he couldn't find any, so they didn't have fire that night. And the shelter, although they made a shelter, it really wasn't bug proof. Mosquitoes still got inside. There is a way to do it if you know what you're doing. Okay. Brian talked about his dreams. What did he dream about? Well, he dreamed about going back to the wilderness, that he was still there. When he wake up, he was back home in the city or suburbs of Long Island. They weren't nightmares. It was just like where everything was kind of peaceful and he felt like he was at home. And then last but not least, Derek finally agreed with Brian's decision in leaving most of the equipment back at the float plane to be taken away with the rest of the support crew. What was his reason for this action? Well because uh, it was the right psychological reason. You know, it's not a real survival test if you got all this stuff with you. Right now I'm talking to you through this GoPro uh, camera and off to the side I have my day pack with some survival stuff that I take out in the woods. Now if I was gonna do this real thing here, I wouldn't have that day pack with anything in it. You know, because in a, in a survival situation, most people aren't gonna have a full blown survival kit. And so again, for the, you know, the reason for this action, what was for that? It was for, to make it a true test of survival. Okay. So anyways, that ends this session now for chapter six. I'm going to do my best to kind of put all of these together so that we can have a nice little lesson uh, that's accessible anytime you want. And also don't forget, please, please, please 
work on those assignments because you know uh, they're starting to count now okay I don't want to see you guys lose out in any way shape or form all right oh Canadian Ivy uh, can't eat it poisonous <laughs>